Welcome, in this video we're going to explain how to do a routing according to European Aviation School's standards of operation. Firstly, let's look at the materials that we're going to use. Routing sheet, aeronautical chart, road or cartographic map, plotter, CR3, pen, permanent marker, alcohol, updated wind information from the wind and temperature chart. On the ground, a calculator, a GPS or Google Maps, and Windy might also be useful. We're going to start with the cartographic or road map where we're going to identify the route that we want to follow, as well as the points and towns that we're going to be identifying. Those are going to be the checkpoints for our route. In this example, we have a route from Sabadell to Girona. The chosen points are Sabadell Airport, Lima, Echo, Lima, Lima. The next point is going to be our first step climb. Then we will reach Granollers. After we will reach our second step climb at Figaro, Als Hostalets de Balagna. Vic, Mangeu, which is the top of climb. Santa Maria de Curco, San Esteva then Bas. At this point, we will start the approach to Girona Airport via the Whiskey Point at Las Planas dos Dolas. Five minutes before reaching the last point, we will communicate our intentions to Girona Control Tower and finally we will land in Girona Airport, Lima Echo Golf Echo. Now we're going to mark our points on the map and draw straight lines between them using the plotter and the marker. As you can see, it is an identification route that doesn't follow a straight line to Girona. With the route drawn, we will proceed to calculate the distances and the true tracks using the plotter as we're going to see in the following videos. We're going to see how to measure distances using scales. We must take into account that we can measure the distances using the plotter as a ruler if we align it with the correct scale of the map. In all the maps, the scale is indicated somewhere on the map cover. In this aeronautical chart, we have it right here, 1 500,000. The plotter has several scales in nautical miles. We have the sectional scale, 1 1 million. And here we have the big scale, 1 250,000 in statue and nautical miles. We're always going to use nautical miles and now we're going to see an example of how to measure the nautical miles with the plotter. We'll be going from Vic to San Esteva then Bas. Once we have the track calculated and a line has been drawn between the two points, we're going to use the scale, which is the one that matches our chart. We're going to choose the right section and use the plotter as a ruler. And we can see that we have 14.5 nautical miles in between the points. Let's say that we're flying from Sabadell to Granollers. In the centre of the plotter we put the initial point and at the tip of the arrow our destination. We're now going to align the arrows of the circle with the meridians so that we can read our true track at the tip of the arrow pointing to our destination. As we can see, we have a true track of 58 degrees. This would be from the centre of the airport until Granollers. But we must take into account if we're going to follow the visual flight rules, Sabadell charts and leave the ATZ via the south or the north, 
Then we will put the centre of the circle in the south or the north, depending on the runway in use. Now, let's say that we're plotting two route points, Granoyers to Vic in a straight line. We will have to consider the altitudes. We must fly below the maximum altitude for VFR flights. This is the maximum altitude in this area. Take into consideration that the maximum altitude will be higher when we're reaching Vic. As we said before, we will put the centre of the circle in Granoyers and we will aim at Vic with the arrow in the ruler. We will be plotting from the centre of each town and we will fly over those centres. After, we're going to align the circle with the meridians. That way we'll get our true track 357. We're going to write down all the data in the routing sheet. Be careful not to write it in the wrong box. Once we have the tracks and distances, we're going to find our altitudes, taking into account the clock rule for altitudes, which has changed recently. In the image, we can see the old rule and the updated one. The aeronautical chart is going to show us the maximum VFR altitudes, the altitudes free of obstacles and the most prominent obstacles along our route. Once we have selected the altitudes for each section, we will write it down in the routing sheet. When we have the altitudes, tracks and distances, we will focus on the routing sheet. At this point, we have to calculate the headings, both magnetic and compass. In order to do so, we will use the wind charts and windy so we can calculate the heading for each section. To get the magnetic heading, we will use the variation of the area, which, luckily for you, is zero in this area. To get the compass heading, we will use the deviation chart from the compass. Now, we have to calculate the speed. Starting from the indicated airspeed we want to follow, we will consider the altitude and temperature in order to calculate our estimated true airspeed. Then we will use our wind and true airspeed to calculate the estimated ground speed, which is the speed we will use to calculate our estimated en route times. In order to calculate the true airspeed, we can either use the CR3 or the rule of 2% every 1000 feet. The CR3 will always give us more accurate results. Remember that in order to calculate our ground speed, we will use the most updated wind information. With the ground speed and the distances, we will calculate our estimated time for each leg or section. For the entry or departure sections of the controlled airspaces, we can use the published VFR charts or estimated times that we have previously calculated. Once we have the altitudes, times and compass headings for each leg of the routing, we will write it down on the map with a marker pen in order to have a means of checking it quickly in flight. Finally, we have finished our routing preparation on the ground. Let's take a look at what we will be doing during the flight. During the flight, we must write down the actual times and speed. In the GPS, we will have an indication of the actual ground speed. If we don't have it, we can calculate the speed after the flight using the actual en route times taken during the flight. We will always take the time once we have visually identified the point on the ground. If it is possible, we will do so right before reaching the point. The estimated times for the next point are always going to be done considering the actual actual time reached at the previous point. The complete routing sheet is going to look like this. During the flight it's very important to maintain the headings, the altitudes and the speed and never jeopardise the safety of the flight by paying too much attention to the time calculations. Remember the rule of flight, navigate and communicate. Thank you very much for watching, we hope the video was useful. Please remember to check your routing with an instructor before every flight. Safe landings everyone!